Welcome everyone to a brand new What If story. This is the extremely requested What If Goku went to the Kaioshin realm. I really hope you guys enjoy and don't forget to leave a like, comment and especially subscribe as well as clicking the bell icon so you never miss another video if you like this sort of content. This Dragon Ball Super What If is going to be exciting so strap in and let's start with a story. Goku finally wakes up and remembers all that happened. He mourns the death of Kibito Shen as well as the rest of the Namekians lost in the explosion. Kibito had for once shown that he was proud of this Saiyan. He knew he needed to revive him one way or the other. Goku had only been out for a few minutes. Vegeta, Broly, Dende, Supreme Kai, Elder Kai, Kakao and the rest of Vegeta's squad mates were all still taking residence in Beerus' planet. Those saved from Namek were still all unconscious. Elder Kai looked at Goku and assured him that he did everything he could and that he needed to honor Kibito Kai's selfless act of kindness. After Whis healed Supreme Kai, Goku asked if there's anything he can do to fix this and bring all those who were lost back. With a solemn look, Kaioshin shakes his head and places a hand on Goku's shoulder before saying that while Kibito's sacrifice was noble, Goku should not interfere with matters regarding life and death. Goku refuses to listen to this and sees it as his responsibility to do the right thing. After all, he's no Kai, he's just a mortal so he can interfere. Old Kai and Kaioshin look at each other, accepting that Goku would not let this go. The young Namekian which had been handed to Goku by Kibito introduced himself as Dende in between cries. He was perplexed at the fact that he had lost his entire race. Goku approached him slowly, explaining that he shouldn't worry, he just needs to leave this to him, smiling cheerfully. Tears ran down Dende's face as he tries to calm himself, but for some reason he feels he can trust this man and tells Goku that he'll do whatever he can to aid in his planet and people's survival. Suddenly, a dazzling white beam descends onto the planet and a tall figure stands out. Goku squinted and upon further inspection, this person seemed to bear a striking resemblance to Whis and the person behind him mirrored Beerus, but perhaps a little bigger. The mysterious figures begin to speak. Before Goku could even ask some questions to Beerus, he growled and walked towards the slightly larger figure. Goku looked between the two gods. Well, he presumed he was a god and then asked Lord Beerus if he really was his brother. And what was this about other universes? Beerus was too caught up in arguing with this new character. So the Elder Kai walked over and began to explain instead. He said that there are 12 universes in total and they reside in Universe 7. Universe 6 is the twin universe and home to Beerus' brother, Shampa, the God of Destruction. He said that every God of Destruction is accompanied by an angel who, similarly to Beerus and Shampa, are also related, which explains the striking resemblance. Shampa's attendant is named Vados. Lastly, he gave some insight about the Super Dragon Balls. At the mention of the Dragon Balls, Goku's eyes widened. Yes, he exclaimed with excitement, hope returning to the Saiyan's eyes, saying that with these Dragon Balls, they can undo every damage that Frieza did and bring Kibito back home. Supreme Kai nodded but said that it was nearly impossible for any mortal to find all the Dragon Balls and he can't help Goku this time. Beerus didn't look too impressed with his brother's sudden visit and looked towards him. He knew his brother wouldn't appear for no reason. So he asked for a motive. Shampa laughed loudly. Oh, it's nothing nefarious. Just a little tournament between our universes to see which one reigns supreme. And whoever comes out victorious will receive the Super Dragon Balls. Now it was Goku's turn to get excited all over again. All seven Dragon Balls handed to him and all he'd have to do is enjoy fighting. He'd be able to save all of those that were lost. A date for the tournament was decided upon and in the meantime, Goku, Vegeta, Broly and Kakao all took residence on Beerus' planet and underwent some more intense training to prepare for the upcoming battles. Broly at first was very violent and did not want anything to do with any of them since he had been their enemy beforehand. He was still upset about his father and had no idea who to trust. He was all alone. Goku felt sorry for him and Vegeta also showed some sympathy, though Vegeta was more interested in the unprecedented power and thought he could be of great use if he joined his pirate gang. Not only that, it was also nice to have found a new surviving Saiyan. Goku explained to Broly that Frieza used him and his father and took advantage of them. He also tried very nicely to explain that using a shock collar on your son isn't exactly a loving thing to do. Broly listened to and contemplated what he said and after some time of mourning and thinking, he agreed to join them in training 
since he did actually enjoy fighting when it was for himself. The final member was chosen to be Monica, at Beerus' request. Goku had no idea there were even stronger fighters out there. They could have probably used their help against Frieza. The days of training passed quickly, and the tournament was upon them. Goku, Vegeta, Broly, Monica, Kakao, and all the various gods arrived to the designated area, an isolated planet between the two universes, surrounded by the Super Dragon Balls. Yeah, Shin was right about how it would be nearly impossible for any mortal to gather them all, Goku thought to himself. Their competitors arrived soon after, and the first battle was between Goku and Botomo. Goku wasn't really sure about what to expect from this guy, and the fight began, with Goku rushing towards the larger figure, punching him in the gut heart while remaining in his basic state. But for some reason, he wouldn't take any damage. Goku quickly picked up on his shtick though. Without further ado, he turned into Super Saiyan Blue, just for a second, and rushed his foe, catching him completely off guard and knocking him out of the ring and into unconsciousness with a roundhouse kick. Ring out! The first match was over, and Goku had come out on top. Beerus grinned at his brother, before making silly faces to mock him. Shampa growled, No worries, we have other far more talented fighters, just you wait, brother. Beerus responded by laughing at his brother's unlikely claims. The cloaked fighters stood before Goku, and all three Saiyans stare in disbelief at the Frieza-like character. Broly's aura immediately burst, as he became extremely restless. He had a burning hatred for Frieza, due to him being used by the cold emperor. He began demanding Kakarot to switch with him. The others watched as Goku turned to face Broly. He explained that taking his anger out on Frost would be wrong. He might be the same race, but just because he looks like him does not mean that he's responsible for the actions of Frieza. Who knows, this guy may be nice. Broly calmed himself and listened to reason. Back to the battle, the Frieza lookalike begins to introduce himself as Frost, and Shampa makes a big deal about him being the legendary hero of his universe. Goku isn't really bothered. He knows he has to win regardless. Frost is slightly in disbelief that Goku isn't worried at all, with Goku saying that, you know, we have our own you in our universe, and his power far surpasses yours. I'm sorry, but this battle's over. Using teleportation, he gets behind Frost and prepares to attack. Frost turns and lands a punch before he's kicked several meters away. He falls to his knees, wounded and hurt. But for some reason, Goku's movements become staggered, and he falls to the floor. Goku is declared knocked out as soon as he falls. Now Frost awaits the next opponent. Beerus gulps under his breath, but Vegeta jumps into the arena, saying that such underhanded techniques wouldn't work for him. He paid close attention, and he knew that nobody from Frieza's clan had such pure intentions. The prince burst his aura open, going into regular Super Saiyan, anything more would be overkill, and blasted him with a Gallic gun. Frost immediately laid on the ground, unconscious and unmoving. Vegeta approached Frost to reveal the poison he had on his arm. Sarcastically, he mocked Shampa, asking him why his warriors were so powerful. Now he wanted a real challenge. With clear frustration in his voice, Shampa told his next warrior to make his way to the arena. A towering robot appeared going by the name of Magetta. Vegeta sized up the foe, and the fight began. Playing out similarly to the fight in the original, Vegeta comes out on top as well, finding it easy and natural to hurl insults at his opponent, resulting in the robot momentarily losing the will to fight and giving Vegeta enough of an opening so that he can throw him out of bounds, securing yet another victory for Universe 7. Next, this is a short, lean boy. There was something very familiar about him to Vegeta, but he couldn't quite place it. Kaba, we soon learn his name, states that he won't lose, and he'll prove how formidable the Saiyan race is. Vegeta especially, as well as the other Saiyans, are a little confused, and Vegeta begins asking questions. The fight happens just like in canon, resulting in Vegeta taking a mentor role to Kaba and helping him unlock Super Saiyan before knocking him out of the ring. Next up is Vegeta vs Hit, Hit being Universe 6's ultimate weapon and can solo the rest of Universe 7. The fight is about the same, with Vegeta succumbing to Hit and his unbeatable time skip. Goku and Beerus both look pretty shocked at the result. Goku is about to step forward, but he stops himself, looking back at Broly and asking him why he doesn't give it a shot first. Broly smiles at Goku, thanking him for the consideration and jumping into the arena. The two fighters stare each other down, and at the sound of the announcer, the battle begins in a clash. Broly, not one for holding back hits, attacked Hit with full force, which surprised the assassin a little. Hit composed himself, then started to dodge more and more of Broly's attacks, as he was getting used to the movements. Broly huffs and bursts his aura open, going immediately to his full power Super Saiyan form. His movements become unpredictable as his rage takes over, though this time, even while enraged, his techniques are far superior to how they were in the past. Hit seemed to struggle, he could neither keep up nor use his technique properly. The sound echoes around them as Broly staggers backwards, winded a little and confused at what just punched him. Snarling at Hit, he delivers a gigantic mouth blast, which catches everyone, including Hit, off guard and destroys part of the portrait of Shampa. 
Kent manages to escape with minimal damage. Kent admitted that this guy may be too much. He knew he had to end it, before anything else could happen. At that exact moment, Broly charged towards him and unleashed a deadly assault, given in completely to his rage. And in the end, Broly was victorious. Goku was ecstatic. They had done it. Namek and all those killed in the explosion could be wished back. They had all agreed that this was the wish they wanted. No objections. Shampa was at a loss for words. Even Beerus and Goku were. Goku wasn't sure how he would have fared against Hit, but he knew he was a formidable foe indeed. He looked forward to the chance to battle him in the future. Seno appeared, congratulating everyone for the tournament. Unlike regular Goku, he has the utmost respect for Zeno and doesn't ask for a tournament. He doesn't even approach Seno. In fact, he is actually a little bit scared. Of him, but that could wait. He needed to revive everyone first, and most importantly to him, Kibito. The dragon was summoned, and their wish was granted with ease, bringing back peace to the universe once more. Goku and the others had done it. They had saved the Namekian race and brought back Piccolo, but Frieza was out there somewhere. However, unbeknownst to everyone, Frieza was the last of their worries. As Goku continues to train in the land of the Kais, he becomes curious and wants to find out more about the other universes. He asks Whis and Beerus if they can take him to visit the others, and they agree. Broly and Vegeta, on the other hand, visit Universe 6, Planet Sodala in particular, becoming friends with not only Kaba, but after a slight altercation with a band of gangsters, they also take on Kaulifla and Kale. Their new adventures begin, and Goku is excited to explore the other universes. He had seen a couple already. The next one was Universe 10, ruled by the Kaioshin Gowasu, who's accompanied by his Kaioshin in training, a Kai known as Zamazu. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope the long wait was worth it. Personally, I think this is gonna be a really really cool conclusion to the What If Goku Was Sent To The Kaioshin Realm series. I'm sorry it took so long, what is it now, like two years or something? I just didn't realize people liked it that much, but you guys clearly loved it, and I'm excited to finally get it done. If things go right, the next part will be up tomorrow at 3pm EST. I think you guys will see why I'm so excited for it. Trust me, this is just a taste of what's to come. I mean, come on, a Kaioshin v Kaioshin story? This is gonna be sick. I don't say it often, but be sure to follow me on Twitter at ShareYourEnergy. I post quite a bit there, and it's the easiest way for you guys to reach me in order to suggest ideas or anything like that. Also, gotta give a huge thank you to my girlfriend at Novaria underscore 8. She helped me out a lot with this video, actually. She pretty much wrote this entire part, and the next part is a huge collaboration between us two. And a huge thank you to the amazing editor, Rajmane. He's been working extremely hard, and he does an amazing job. Next week, I will have the next part of what if the Saiyans were revived and I'm very excited for it. If you like this sort of content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. I gotta give a huge shout out to the Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Legend and Ultra Instinct members of the channel, particularly the Ultra Instinct members Super Kami Mewtwo and Neo Woodcomb. Anyways, shout out to Eric Dragon, Super Kami Mewtwo, Neo Woodcomb, Dustin Nelson, Secret Saiyan, Feel Jay Akir, Pizza Hut Kitman, Orlando Castellano, Hannah Rowan, Sir Justice, Midnight Combatant, The Real Samuel Randall, and Zachary Croy. It's so cool to see so many of you guys with the Super Saiyan 3 badge that you get for being a member for a set amount of time. Some of you guys even have the Super Saiyan God one. So, I can't thank you guys enough. Wait, By the like way, we have a shop now. For now, we only have stickers, but I will be putting out some more merch in the future, such as t-shirts and the like. I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. Anyways, until we meet again, guys. See ya! Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Smugstick, unless you want to be destroyed. Lord Beerus, that's hardly fair. But also, don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified when he uploads new videos.